Hello and welcome to this episode of Inspire Africa with me, Jerry Fisayo Bambi. On this episode, we bring you stories of some people providing solutions in the transportation and mobility sector. First, in Morocco, through the use of bicycles. And then in Ghana, through solar vehicles. This is Inspire Africa. Now, over 50% of the human population knows how to ride a bike. In Marrakesh, Morocco, nearly everyone can. One group, however, wants to take it a notch further. Let's take a ride into it. As an environmentally friendly way to get around, bicycles are a part of the local culture in Marrakesh. This is where the idea of creating peculiar bikes came from. This NGO has set itself the goal of developing a range of activities around cycling. For the founder of the project, Kanta Baka, this means of transportation offers many positive solutions. I visited Marrakesh for the first time and I took a bike tour. I fell in love with the city. It was an opportunity to discover it better. I get to know the people in a different way and you see the beauty and the dynamics of the city. It was a great discovery for me and I saw that there is a great potential for cycling, for tourists and especially to give access to education and employment. This workshop aims to create opportunities for education and employment. Here, the beneficiaries work as mechanics, delivery men, or as guides for tourists on their bike rides. The initiative focuses on the sustainability of the project. Educational workshops and competitions are offered to attract more young people in dire situations. I could not finish my studies. I came here to develop my skills and especially to work. In a short time, I learned many things. I am a manufacturer. I make the mechanical part. This is my specialty here. When you work here, you can learn other languages, like English and Arabic. There are also theoretical courses to learn how to make bicycles. These young advocates have had the privilege of working in this project since its inception. Today, they've become managers and project leaders. The Picala Bikes team is a team of young people. Picala offers them the opportunity to improve their professional situation. They started as distributors and delivery men, and now they're running the whole project. Based on the success of this adventure, Cantao is preparing to carry out the same kind of project in other cities in Morocco. 29-year-old Raya Gemega Kwewo did not benefit much from formal education. The homeschooled Ghanaian today is, however, an international consultant and now runs an organization that is catering to the needs of some refugees in some parts of his country. Here is more on his story. Being born in Ghana's capital, Accra, did not mean Raya Gemega Kwewo was to do the normal. His education did not require him to go through classroom structures from kindergarten through to the university. He was homeschooled together with his seven other siblings. I remember when I was 17 years old, I wanted to learn German. And because of the deep learning that we'd done, it took me four months to learn the language. We spent the entire day um, studying the subjects that we were presented with. We didn't follow any curriculum of any sort. It was all in-house. Raya has risen to become an envy of many. He's now an international consultant. His organization, Rio, presently provides unconditional basic income to over 2,300 refugees and migrants in Crisan and Ampen refugee camps in Ghana. And the global organization is managed by myself and my co-founder, Avina Ajit. But with regards to managing each refugee community, that's done by the refugee beneficiaries themselves. We do that to prove the sustainability of the project, to prove that refugees are indeed a bankable community. They indeed had responsibilities and lives before they became displaced. The cryptocurrency scheme gives beneficiaries $1.50 into their mobile money accounts. I use the money to support my expenses in school, like my school fees and some of my provisions. With that money, I think that I will increase my cassava. I'll buy more cassava and to produce more acheke. 
Raya is now advocating for traditional education to be built on critical thinking that allows for flexibility and freedom to act rather than boxing people up into what he termed stereotypes. If you are just joining us, you are watching Inspire Africa with me, Jerry Fisayo Bambi. Now, still on Ghana, we go to meet with George Appiah, CEO and co-founder of Solar Taxi Ghana, a startup that is championing clean transportation through the local assembling and manufacturing of solar vehicles. George, I'd leave the rest for you to talk to us about, but it's good to have you with us. Thank you. Same here. Glad to be here. So let's get right into it. Tell us, what is Solar Taxi about? Well, um, Solar Taxi is um, our way of finding sustainable transportation for the modern African um, with um, increased population, um, rapid uh, urbanization. Um, mobility has become very critical to the economy. Um, and, then, and as Africans, we need to achieve higher mobility. We have the lowest uh, rate of mobility in the world and that actually also have some collaboration with development. So in our quest to develop, um, our way of um, helping towards that is um, achieving sustainable transportation uh, for the African. So we started in 2018 um, as a simple question on how do we find sustainable solution for the African? And we will build our first design and build our first prototype here in Ghana. Um, that went pretty well, um, which was quite a success. Um, after, after that prototype, we were able to get some partnerships that enable us to look at the business model and also scaling up commercially. George, there is concern about the affordability of renewable energy or the facilities that are powered by it, especially when you compare with other means. Uh, how different is yours? I think um, towards um, renewable energy, there's, there's a bit of higher capital um, cost comparatively, but operational cost otherwise is relatively cheaper than um, going with the diesel or petrol uh, form of energy for, for powering uh, the transportation. Um, and even if, um, if we are supposed to use an, um, electricity uh, from the grid, um, in Ghana, we have one of the lowest tariffs on the continent. So I think we are getting to the place where that the parity, price parity has been, has been achieved. And that allows the renewable energy technology, especially for something like transportation, um, being, being feasible. Is it a fair game for Africa when it comes to renewable energy? I think, um, Yes, in terms of the sources, we are we have that advantage on. But what is needed is a capital investment to enhance this huge potential when it comes to renewable energy. And I think that is where the challenge is right now. Um, but if we are able to surmount that aspect, um, then it becomes advantageous for us in Africa. I think Africa will be the only continent to develop in the world without polluting, possibly without causing massive pollution. Um, as maybe the other continents might have gone through in their industrial age. And to my last question, George, uh, but it's a two-in-one, actually. Um, where did you get your inspiration from, and what is your message to those aspiring to, uh, to solve problems using renewable energy? Fortunately, unfortunately, I, I was brought up in the rural area, living with my grandma, and I kind of experienced a lot of challenges first time. We used to walk close about three hours to our farm, just to go and farm and then carry all our food stuff three hours back. Um, also, we didn't have access to electricity. So um, this kind of inspired me to really to be an engineer with one of my aim is providing uh, sustainable solutions, um, like access to um, sustainable energy um, and which transportation is very key to it. So um, I had a lot of inspiration um, growing up in my rural area, I'm growing up with my grandma. And with my one, my, my goal is how do I provide um, access to sustainable energy to people like my grandma who have to then live in the village without access to sustainable energy. So we need to take it as a matter of agency, as innovators and as entrepreneurs, look at how do we also contribute to providing a future, a sustainable future for, for us as Africans and for our um, generation ahead and that's of present and ahead of us. George, thank you very much for sharing uh, your thoughts on your business and insights with us. Um, uh, my very best wishes. Thank you too for having me. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye. 
And as always, this is where I sign out on Inspire Africa. You can see this episode again on our website, africannews.com and euronews.com. Make sure you go to the program section where you'd find Inspire Africa. I am Jerry Fisaya Bambi, and I am leaving you with the images that caught our attention on social media. See you next time. This one says we are with you. Simone Biles, one of the greatest gymnasts of all time. And a moment of glory for South Africa's swimming gold medalist, Tachana Schumacher. No medal, but a gallant fight for Nigeria's basketball queens, the Tigress. Plus, dreams indeed come true. NBA most valuable player, Janice Atentokumpo.